Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter and today we're here to have a look at a new release which is made by Halogen as you can see and this model that we're looking at today is the Class 14 Teddy Bear made by Halogen. These models have been out before but these are a new batch well this model is part of a new batch that was released the previous week before I filmed this video they've released four versions there's two in the BR green livery one of which is one of the preserved ones there's also a model in the desert sand livery which is another preserved one and then there's this one number four in the NCB Ashington blue livery which is the one I wanted and it's the one I bought I bought this one for a couple of reasons because it will look great with my coal train so it'll be nice to have this pulling the wagons I have with the real coal loads in them but also it will fit in well with my NCB pannier the one that I painted myself which you saw me do in the project pannier video which has gone down really well which that video I uploaded last year so it has gone down really well but also it's another NTB loco to have because the only other NTB livery model I've got in my collection is the pannier that I painted myself so when I saw this model I just had to go for this particular livery but anyway let's get this model unboxed and see what it's like it's only just arrived in the post so this is a very different design of box to Heldon's normal box instead of just the blue box with the red stripe in the one corner it's a very different design of box which has got Hatton's model railways on the front as you can see there Heldon's loco down here it's a different colour of box and also you have some drawings on both sides of the box of the model which looks really nice might have to open up the other end and push it out there we are I only did that because I couldn't get my fingers into the box to pull it out so that's why I did that so there's the empty box we'll put that down to one side and then there's the model just look at that, that looks stunning So on the back of the box, well, we'll take away the tray first. And then, first of all, we have some train reporting numbers to go on the loco, on the head coat panels. And these are actually stickers. So I shall be putting some of these on the model but we'll do that later I think so I'll just put them down to one side and then here we have the instructions as you can see here now we do believe that these models are actually limited edition to Hattons they're Hattons exclusives even though you can buy them from other shops especially because it's got Hattons on the packaging and it's got the Hattons logo at the top there but on the front it tells you thank you for purchasing the model on the front there on the back it gives you some prototype specification and some brief history on the real logo and yes it does confirm here that the model has been produced exclusively for Hattons even though that I have seen other shops selling these models but there we are that's not me having a dig or anything you know it's just pointing that out but anyway so here's the class 14 assembly 
as you can see there. So each part is numbered, so if you lose a part or a part is damaged, you can send away for one. Then we have the instructions of how to get the body off. As you can see there with some photos showing you how to do it. Which you have to set the cab off and then remove the two bonnet ends. It's the usual stuff we've seen before so I'll put that to one side. Then I'll take away the plastic cover. So now we come onto the detail bag that's just under here. Seller tapes on. There we are. I've pulled the tape off. So we'll have a look at these details in here first. Before we move on to the model. So in this little accessory bag we have, so first of all we have the slim tension lock couplings. We have a brake rod to fit under the loco, a couple of sand boxes with some sanding gear on, then we have these detail parts which are the brake blocks, I believe. They look like them, and the painted blue, the painted the same colour as the loco, as well as the sandboxes and the brake rod and that's a very nice touch that is. Now we come on to the rest of the unboxing. Excuse the train horn then. So just undo the clip of the box. And then we lift the model out. Put the package into one side. Then remove this plastic wrap. And then we gently lift the model out. Put the plastic wrap to one side. And so now we can have a look at the model in detail. So the model unboxed, I'm first going to talk about the weight. And this is a very heavy model. There's a lot of weight in this model, which is good, because it means there's not going to be any traction troubles here. So this model will easily be able to pour that rake of coal wagons that I have. Moving to the detail now, which we have plastic spoon buffers, as you can see. I've said this before, but I don't really have much care for spoon buffers. But if you like them, then they'll keep you happy. They are made of plastic. It perhaps would have been nice if they were made of metal but that's just a small thing and that's not going to detract from the model because they still look nice regardless but you could always paint them up and put grease in the middle if you wanted moving on to the buffer beam which we have lots of rivets some already fitted vacuum pipes and a screw link coupling you can also see the NEM pocket there as well there is a hole in the buffer beam but that's to get the coupling into the pocket. We also have the lights on the locomotive there and some lamp irons which look nice. We have some hazard warning stripes on the front and you can see the head card boxes on the front there which light up and that's where those train reporting numbers go. We also have that curious bit of detail on the front there. It's separately fitted but I'm not entirely sure what it is. It could possibly be some sort of handle to open up the latches on the front there on the loco here I'm not 100% certain though but I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments so it'll be interesting to know to find out what that detail is for sure we've got separately fitted handrails on the loco on the top there and they are painted white which look really nice because they certainly stand out a lot and in my opinion I think they lift the livery as well We've got a very nice grill there on the side of the loco 
as well as a separately fitted and painted handrail. We also have the latches on the side there to open up to the engine. They would in real life, but they don't on the model. But then again, you wouldn't expect them to, and I personally don't, because it probably wouldn't be that easy to do. And if it did, it then might make the model more expensive. We have a footstep with some very nice separately fitted handrails there on the sides and some rivets as well just on the end here as you can see excuse the makeup brush I was using that to point to the rivets and just look at the detail on the steps you've got the treads there as well which you can just about see we have a footstep in the middle where the cab is and behind that you've got a mesh grill which is there to cover up the jack shaft there that looks really nice there's some very nice detail on the frames of the loco mainly rivets which look really nice and of course we have the side rods which I'll be looking forward to seeing those move on the model like they do on the real thing we have glazing in the cab windows as well as some separately fitted window wipers and the rims of the windows painted as well we have separately fitted and painted hand drills on the side of the door there and some very nice door handles rivets on the trims of the cab windows and there is actually some detail in the cab there which doesn't look to be painted but it's there and it looks nice but it's been done really well on the cab roof we have some very nice rivet detail as you can see and we also have these separately fitted bits of detail here on the top which look they could be fragile so do be careful with them when you're handling the model we have a mesh grill with a fan underneath there which doesn't spin but I don't really expect it to spin but then again you wouldn't really notice the fan spinning anyway not unless you looked right down above the loco but in my model railway videos you'd probably never see the fan spinning anyway even if it did but there's some nice rivet details around the side of the fan there by the grill we also have more of these bits of detail here as there is on the cab roof as I showed you I don't know what these details are and what they're for but they are they are already fitted so it's not like the case of the class 52 western by Dapple where they get you to stick them on which is very fiddly to do and not easy so I'm glad that they've already been fitted to the model then we have the exhaust port there with the exhaust on the top where all the diesel fumes come out of so I suppose you could weather the top of the exhaust port here around the exhaust if you wanted to on the other end of the loco we have some more latches there a separately fitted handrail and some more rivet detail and of course another step there again on this end of the loco more of those separately fitted details on top of the loco just here and here as well as well as a separately fitted handrail painted white just like the other handrail is on the top of the loco the other end of the loco has exactly the same detail as on the other end the headco boxes hazard warning stripes lamp irons lights and rivet detail as well as the screw link coupling and pre-fitted vacuum pipes and of course just like the other end this end has sprung buffers on top of the loco we have what look like I guess are the horns for the loco not too sure but there is some nice rivet detail though and it's there just like on the real loco and it looks nice on the other side of the loco the detail is exactly the same as on the other side the livery application is superb the correct shade of blue and very nice and evenly applied very nice even coat and I just love the blue it just looks absolutely stunning and even the wheels and the frames of the loco are painted blue as well which looks really nice and of course you've got the loco's running number number four and then CB crisply printed on both sides of the cab on both sides 
very nice crisply printed font there and the correct style of font as well and numbering okay so what I thought I'd do now is show you fitting the train reporting numbers on the class 14 now originally when these were released they weren't stickers if I remember rightly you had to take the body off to remove the cab and then remove the bonnets to simply get the train reporting numbers in but they've changed it for stickers to just simply stick on the front but you'll still get the working lights so you have different train reporting numbers for each different loco here for different ones now they don't actually have any Pacific head codes to put on this one You've got numbers here 1403, 1404, 1405, 1406 and 1407 Those are actually the product codes The one I have is 1411 which there isn't any train reporting numbers on here for that but you could still fit these on if you wanted because you can still do that, you could still leave this model without the train reporting numbers because I have seen some NTB class 14 teddy bears without the train reporting numbers in the head code boxes but I want to put some head codes in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit these ones here I'm going to fit these the ones for 1406 the same ones there to fit to 1405 but we'll fit those on and these will be easy to do it was easy to put on on the class 52 western by Dapple which also has sticker train reporting head codes to stick on the front so it will be easy enough to do ok well I've made a slight mistake these are not actually stickers having read the small print on the bottom which I didn't read it says carefully cut out the required display from this sheet with a blade and straight edge or sharp scissors and then it actually says that these are to secure in place with a clear glazing piece provided which is designed to be push fit into the aperture which means I think you still do have to take the body off because I thought that these were actually stickers because they do sort of look like stickers in a way but they're not so my bad I thought they were stickers but you can still stick them on the front by simply gluing them on the front so that's what I shall be doing ok so I've cut out the train reporting numbers using a Stanley knife and some scissors so now I've just got a PVA glue them into place so it's a small amount of PVA glue only a small amount put it on a cocktail stick and you just simply apply the glue on the front but the lights will still shine through the train reporting numbers anyway even if you do stick them on the front so I did this with my class 17 I just simply stuck the train reporting numbers on the front of the head codes and the lights still shine through them
Okay, let's see what we're doing. There we are. So there's one. And now for the other one. I'm only gonna show you sticking them on the on this end. I'll do the others off camera. So I do apologise for that slight mistake I made earlier. I did think that these were just stickers. But you know, we all make mistakes. This means in the part where I mentioned this model of stickers, I just have to put a bit of text on the screen to tell people that they're not actually made of stickers. Well, they're not actually stickers, I should say, rather. But you know, like I say, we all make mistakes. So there we are. Those ones are now glued in place, so I'll put the others on. Okay, so the train reporting numbers and then the head code boxes. So now we can get this model on the track. Now we come on to the running performance. And as you can see, straight out of the box, she's a smooth runner. There's no motors burning out, jerky movement, or anything that we shouldn't be experiencing straight out of the box. She's straight out of the box, a smooth runner, and she runs as she should. And quite a quiet motor as well. Moving to the loaded test run now. And we have the NCB livery class 14 teddy bear all in the rake of car wagons around the layout. There's 14 wagons there. They're filled with real coal so they're fairly heavy. But as you can see, she can manage these with ease. And this just shows you why the weight is just so important in these models. Because without the weight, 
this model wouldn't be able to pull this rake. This is why we don't have traction tyres anymore, because the weight provides all the traction. Now I haven't mentioned the working lights yet, so I've turned the lights off just to show you. So you can see the train reporting numbers in the head code boxes have lights in them as well as one of those lights on the side there. And that one light there also has a light in. So the, those three at the front are the headlights, or headlamps I suppose you could call them, and that one at the back is the tail lamp. That just looks stunning. So overall, the Halogen Class 14 teddy bear is a superb model and I can't fault it. Stunning detail, excellent performance and strength, what more could you want? It's an all-round stunner. And I can't wait to get this running alongside the pannier I have in NTB livery. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a double header with the Class 14 and the NTB pannier. Can't say that's going to happen yet, but it will be happening. So that's something to look forward to. So overall, I'm going to rate the Helgen Class 14 teddy bear in NTB Ashington Blue livery a 10 out of 10. 
This has been Class 47 Peter reviewing the Howards and Class 14 in NTB livery and I'll see you again soon for the next review. Not sure what it's going to be yet but until then subscribe to the channel if you haven't already check out my other videos and I'll see you again soon but for now over and out.